How do you motivate yourself? One of the things that we must do is that we must be involved in working on achieving self-mastery. You must work on yourself continuously. Never be satisfied with yourself. Always know that as you invest the effort and time on you, that's the greatest ability that human beings have above animals. See, a dog can't be anything but a dog. Tree can't be anything but a tree. Human being, you've got unlimited potential. You can put effort on you, and by concentrating on you and developing you, you can transform your life wherever you are right now. So you want to work on yourself. You want to read books that inspire you and motivate you. You want to listen to tapes over and over and over again. And I suggest that you listen to tapes when you first get up in the morning. You want to control the spirit of your day. When you first wake up in the morning, your mind is operating at 10.5 wave cycles per second. That's when the subconscious mind is most impressionable. Whatever you hear in the first 20 minutes when you wake up, that will affect the spirit of your day. When you listen to tapes, listen with relaxed belief. Believing that this can happen for you. And by listening to them, listen to them over and over and over again, and you will get a breakthrough. And as you continue to work on yourself, you will begin to expand your vision of yourself. You begin to work towards self-mastery. And you will begin to see it reflect itself in all the dimensions of your life, your mental life, your physical life, your social life, in your relationships, your monetary life. So concentrate on developing yourself because if you don't I guarantee you that you will make a settlement and most people have in addition to working on yourself and as you work on yourself you feel good about yourself and as you feel better about yourself you treat yourself differently develop a health plan see you can't feel well and do well if you don't have good health you can't perform if you don't have your health your health is valuable Develop a health plan, a plan that you will follow because this is the only vehicle that you have to carry you through this experience called life. And you want to take good care of it because you love you enough. You care enough about you. And that's not easy. It is not easy having a health plan and sticking to it. But you're worth it doing it again and again and again. I have lost 22 pounds several times. Next thing is, as you take care of yourself, the next key is keys to motivation, to self-motivation. You want to live life with energy and passion. You want to make a conscious effort to be lively. See, in life, you either saying hello or goodbye. You either on the way or in the way. <laughs> Leave dead people alone. Some folks just walking around looking sad. How you doing, honey? <laughs> Stay away from these people. Just go away from them. It affects you. You want to smile. You want to be happy. You got a lot to be thankful for. But you watch some of the faces around you every day. And I tell you, some of these faces, they will put you in a depressed state of mind. So you want to avoid these kind of faces. When you see them coming, turn your head. <laughs> Next thing is that you want to monitor your inner conversations. The things that you say to yourself. You want to watch them. And in watching them, you want to take charge. You don't really need to read anything. Forget all that. That's that inner conversation. Oh, you don't need to worry about trying to go into your own business. Forget that. You can't do that. What if you lose everything you've got? That inner conversation that stopped you from doing the things you want to do less, don't do that. The next thing that is a key to self-motivation is that you've got to ask yourself, what do I want out of life? What do you want out of life? What do you want out of a job? What do you want out of a career? What do you want out of a relationship? What do you want? What gives you your life? What, how will you know when you got it? What will make you happy? You need to know. You need to start asking yourself some questions. What do I really, really, truly want? You need to be exact about that. 
Don't be vague. Oh, I just want to be happy. That's too vague. What will make you happy? How will you know when you got it? Zero in on it. Be exact. Be specific. And as you do that, that will stimulate that superconscious mind or the reticular activating system of your mind that will begin to find those things, to identify with it. And once you begin to determine that which you want, take the time to write it down. Don't just think about it, write it down. That is a subjective process that engages the subconscious mind. Write it down. Once you write it down, read it three times a day, morning, noon, and night. Why is that important? Because what it will do, it will cause you to focus. It will cause you to concentrate. When that other conversation is going on telling you what you cannot do, telling you all of the impossibilities and all of the obstacles, your concentrating will begin to create a larger vision within yourself and you start looking for and seeing some new opportunities. You start creating some openings for yourself. As you begin to read that every day, every day, day in and day out, that will make you focus. That will discipline your thinking. And you'll get all kind of creative ideas. As I talk to you right now, being involved in this immersion process, you're going to create some openings for yourself. You're going to get some ideas. You're going to feel your adrenaline flowing and you're going to think about something, some idea you had. You say, I want to go back and I'm going to look at that again from a different vantage point, not from the level of the problem of the obstacles that I encountered, but from a higher vantage point. Because what you will begin to see and to know as I have talked to the higher consciousness within you, that you are powerful, that you are a miracle worker. And that inner conversation has conditioned you to believe that you are not. And as you begin to discover the truth of who you are, whatever challenge that you're facing in life, and if you're living, you're facing some challenge, you'll begin to know that you are powerful and that you're a miracle maker. So as you begin to write down exactly what it is that you want, read it every day. The next thing is see yourself there. How will you feel once you get there? What will the experience be like for you? What will be different? What kind of person do you have to become in order to get there? Visualize yourself there, living the experience. You want to see yourself beyond your circumstances. You got a challenge, see yourself beyond your challenge. See yourself with the challenge already resolved. And knowing that all is well, seeing yourself in control and in charge of your destiny, being healthy and happy. The next thing is, it is important in the area of motivating yourself, it's important to know why you're doing it. Because that mind will say, why bother? Why go through all this? This is too hard. No, throw in the tower. It's not worth it. Has it ever said that to you before? Here's how you can handle that. Here's how you override that. Write down five reasons why you deserve it. Why do you deserve what you want? Why you? Why do you deserve it? What meaning and value will it bring to your life? What's so different about you that you deserve your goal or this goal? And when you write down those five reasons, when you have some down moments and you're going to have them, when that conversation start talking to you and it's going to talk to you, what you will do is you can pull that out and read it and it will build you up. It will be your rod and your staff to comfort you through some challenging moments because you're going to have some. Life will knock you between the eyes. It will catch you on the blind side, come out of nowhere, stuff you can't anticipate. That will knock the wind out of you. You want to give up. That's why it's important for you to work on yourself, listening to tapes, building yourself up, talking to yourself with power, feeling and conviction, building yourself up day in and day out. The next thing is that whatever you do, you want to develop technical mastery. You want to be the best at what you do. You want to master it. See, part of, of, of self-motivation is you've got to find something that gives you a strong sense of competence. Well, you become known for that. You develop a reputation of being good at doing that. You set some high personal standards for yourself. You're not competing with anybody else. You're just unfolding yourself to be the best person that you could be. 
that you want to give the best quality service that you can give because that is a statement about who you are. The other thing that's the key to self-motivation is recognize the fact that you're going to get into some slumps, recognize the fact that you're going to encounter a great deal of failure in life. It goes with the territory. But in the face of that, you want to be relentless. When you want something, you don't expect everybody to say, oh, come on in, we've been, oh, you want this? Oh, great, we want to give this to you. You're such a nice person. You're doing it for your family, aren't you? Great. No, no, life isn't like that. But you've got to decide that I'm going to be fearless. I refuse to be denied. And I'm going to go all out. I'm going to be relentless. I don't care how many no's I encounter. The next thing is that when you want something out of life, you've got to be willing to go into action. Don't wait around for things to be just right. Don't wait for things to be perfect. Don't wait for the ideal situation. It will never be ideal. There will always be a reason. Well, as soon as the children grow up, as soon as I pay my bills, or as soon as I get my divorce, <laughs> all kinds, as soon as I get enough money together, do what you can, where you are with what you have, and never be satisfied. A lot of people never take a chance in life. They don't want to take any chances. They want the situation to be ideal. See, that's not walking by faith. That's walking by sight. If I can see it, I'll do it. No, 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 no. That's a lot of people saying, if I can see it, I'll believe it. No, 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 no. If you believe it, you can see it. And don't be disturbed because no one else can see it. That's not unusual. That is ordinary. But because you want some different kind of results in your life, you've got to be willing to be unreasonable. If you want unreasonable results in your life, you've got to be willing to be unreasonable. Part of being unreasonable, you don't judge according to appearances. Part of being unreasonable, you can see it because you believe it. That's part of being unreasonable. Part of being unreasonable, you're like Paul who said, you must have the faith to call forth those things that be not as though they were. That's part of being unreasonable. Most people won't do that. One of the keys to self-motivation that empowers you is that you want to find a cause larger than yourself. Find something that you can contribute to. Find something that you can make a difference because you can. Part of what feeds your larger vision, part of what gives you a reason for being, part of what gives you your life is being able to give something back. Say, I can't afford to give anything. You can't afford not to give. Give your time, give your talent. There's nothing just to go over and lick envelopes. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do, but I'm going over there. It's part of my tithing in the universe. Once you develop that, that special sense of mission, and that's what you develop when you're part of a larger cause than yourself, it drives you. You don't need an alarm clock to get up in the morning. You have special power. You'll go places and folk will like to be around you. They will know there's something different about you. When you go in, they'll say, hey, that's somebody important. I want to know who you are. I just want to be near you. That energy that you have, that consciousness that you will embody will affect everybody around you. You must be willing to do the things today others won't do. In order to have the things tomorrow others won't have. That's why the Book of Life said the road to life is straight and narrow and few there be that find it because few there be that are willing to do the things today others won't do. In order to have the things tomorrow others won't have. What are the things that others won't do? Number one, make discipline a major force in your life. How many of you know if you'd have been more disciplined you'd be further along to reach your goals right now? Socrates said the undisciplined life is an insane life. The road to life is straight and narrow because few there be that are willing to discipline themselves. Here's something else that most people won't do. Make it okay to fail. A lot of people, 85% of people allow their fear of failure 
to outweigh their desire to succeed. Repeat after me, please. Anything that's worth doing is worth doing badly. Yeah, see, anything is worth doing is worth doing right as we have been taught if you know how to do it. But if you don't know how to do it, it's worth doing badly until you get it right. I bet you, and I wasn't there, I bet you that when Bishop T.D. Jakes first stood up to preach, when he gave his trial sermon, he did not have the command, he did not have the mastery, he did not have the confidence, he did not have the depth, he did not have the capacity to translate and milk scripture like he did last night when he first started out. Now write this down. You don't have to be great to get started, but you have to get started to be great. The first time I stood up to speak, I stood up and my mind sat down. I looked at the audience and I panicked. I had to introduce a play at school. Uh, we're about, we're about to start a, uh, 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 ran off Mr. Washington. Mr. Brown, where are you going? Uh, Mr. Washington, I, I can't think, sir. Uh, I, 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 I don't know. Did you rehearse? Yes, sir, I did. Well, what's wrong? Why did you say your lines? I, 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 don't, I don't know, sir. I, I just I got up there and I looked at him and everything left me. Let me do it another day, please, sir. No, go back out there, Mr. Brown. Mr. Washington, I'll mess up, please, sir. Don't, 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 don't send me out there now. I'll mess up. Mr. Brown, if you run now, you will always be running. Anything that's worth doing, it's worth doing badly until you get it right. Why are you moving like that? I got to go to the bathroom, sir. Mr. Brown. Go back out there. Yes, sir. We have about to start a plea called 12 Angry Men, directed by Mr. Leroy Washington. And I ran off. The next day, hey, I fell far. Hey, Les Brown, how are you? They dogged me out. They talked about me so bad. The next time another event came up, Mr. Washington, Mr. Brown, you're up. I said, no, Mr. Washington. Everybody says, no, not him. I said, they're right, Mr. Washington, not me. He said, Mr. Brown, you are up. Yes, sir. And I went out and pretty soon, when people laughed at me, it didn't bother me. They would throw paper and I could catch it without losing my concentration. And then one day, I came out and a hush went across the audience because it must have been something about me that indicated that I had come to myself. And Mr. Washington had been practicing with me to give a presentation. And I looked at the audience and I said, I choose not to be a common man. It's my right to be uncommon if I can. I seek opportunity, not security. I do not wish to be a kept citizen, humbled and dull by having the state look after me. I want to take the calculated risk to dream and to build, to fail and to succeed. I refuse to live from hand to mouth. I prefer the challenges of life to the guaranteed existence, the thrill of fulfillment to the stale calm of utopia. I will never cower before any master, nor bend to any threat. It's my heritage to stand erect, proud and unafraid, to face the world boldly and say, this I have done. Girl stood up say that's my boyfriend honey I like me some less proud baby <laughs> but I didn't start off like that you have something special you have talents and abilities in you that you don't even know so how do we begin to create wealth let me give you some some ideas number one write this down knowledge What knowledge that you have in this economy, part of what we need, that people are willing to pay you for that. Next is talent. What talent? Dion's talent is playing football. I didn't have that as a talent. My talent is talking. To me, my definition of success is doing what you love to do and find somebody to pay you to do it. <laughs> so I find people to pay me to talk. I talk. I brought a game to this, to this country called Beard Wist that I invented. 
And that's how I talk, I shoot pool, I signify, I make you tear up your cards, break your cue stick, because I talk a lot of trash, I throw you off. You've never been to Boston, I'll take you there. So I learned how to signify and talk trash, all right? And so I make a living talking trash to AT&T. I make more in one hour than 90% of the American public earn working for a whole year doing what I love to do. That I've developed my talent. You want to master your talent. Find out what it is that you love to do. I love to talk. Scripture is another key that says to us of what we need to do to begin to develop ourselves. Luke 12, 34, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So what do you love to do? And then explore ways in which you can earn a living doing that. Cooking, writing, painting, working with numbers, working with people. The other thing is not only must you have knowledge, talent, some skill, but the other thing that's important, faith to act on whatever your dream is. See, if you don't believe in yourself, how many people you know that have a lot of talent, a lot of abilities, but they don't believe in themselves? Raise your hands. See, that faith is very important. So the faith to act on those dreams, those desires. Here's scripture that I, that I like very much. Proverbs 16, 16th chapter, third verse. Commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. Commit means to carry into action deliberately. Commit means to make it happen no matter what. Commitment, the difference between next time you have bacon and eggs, the chicken was involved, the pig was committed. He had to give it all up. That's gonna take a minute to sink in, no, all right? See, when you make a commitment, I'm gonna become wealthy. When you make it important, when you decide I'm going to do it no matter what, life changes for you. See, most people don't keep their commitments to their commitments. That's why they lead lives of poverty, lives of misery, lives of unhappiness. Socrates said the uncommitted life isn't worth living. So part of what you must do, whatever commitment, whatever covenant you make with God while you're here, to go back to be a better father, to go back to make a difference in the community, to go back to change your life, to decide not to ever to use drugs or alcohol again. To decide to bet that you're going to begin to recreate yourself, that you're going to be reborn to a new state of consciousness. Whatever commitment that you make, keep your commitment to your commitment. No matter what, if it's hard, then do it hard. But keep your commitment to your commitment. And then it says, thy works. See, now most people look at that, commit thy works. Most people look at activity that one engages in to achieve a predetermined objective. But works, commit thy works, it pluralizes, there's an S there. Learn this from Bishop. You gotta watch these things in scripture. Just can't go on the surface. There's an S, then say commit thy work, whatever task, whatever talent, whatever skill, whatever knowledge you have, and begin to make money doing that, making a difference, impacting people's lives, but commit thy work. So there's two kinds of work. There's external work, activity that you're engaged in, and there is internal work. Now why is that important? Pharisees said to Jesus, when shall the kingdom of God come? The kingdom of God coming not by observation. They shall say it's neither lo there, lo here, behold, the kingdom of God within you. It's within you. Seek ye first the kingdom, and all these things will be added unto you. Wealth, good relationship, peace of mind, good health, better community, whatever you want to desire. A more powerful ministry. So the work is internal as well as external. So therefore, number one is, first step is you got to live your calling. You got to decide what is it you love. Second thing is, you've got to work on yourself. Write this down under work on yourself. You don't get in life what you want, you get in life what you are. You have a ministry and you have 300 people, that's a reflection of you. You have 2,000, that's a reflection of you. You have a job, you're generating $1,200 a year, or $2,000, or $500,000, whatever you earn, whatever you're producing in your life is a reflection of you. That's why it says, judge a tree by the fruit it bears. I can look at what you're producing and I can tell you a lot about who you are. 
And if you look at people who are living below their potential and sinning, and sin in the Aramaic language means falling short of the mark. I asked the question earlier, how many of you have goals? Do you raise your hands? How many of you know if you had your life to live over again, you can do more than what you've done? The majority of us raise our hands. Then that was an indication, that was testimony to reflect the fact that you operate operating below your potential. That's a sin. Herein my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit. Didn't just say fruit, much fruit. See, when you leave here, you've got to make a commitment to be more fruitful, to be more productive, to make greater impact. So what will allow you to do that? You've got to spend time working on yourself. In order to do, write this down, in order to do something you've never done, you've got to be someone you've never been. In order to do something you've never done, you've got to be someone you've never been. That's why scripture says you must be born again. You've got to die as you are now. You've got to be willing to give up who you are now for what you can become. Certain things will no longer fit into your life. There's no place for it. In order to do something you've never done, you've got to be someone you've never been. So you've got to spend serious time reading, writing your goals down, reading scripture, anchoring yourself spiritually, to handle the storms of life because they're going to come. So every day you have to sell yourself and get out of your mind those old thoughts, that old belief system. Every day you've got to sell yourself on that it's possible. That you got to put a new mind in you. You got to get out of your mind. You got to begin to restructure your thinking. Every day you've got to begin to recondition your mind. See, many of us go through life making choices, thinking it's our choices, and it's not. See, let me share something with you. The easiest thing I've ever done was to earn a million dollars. The most difficult thing I've ever done was to believe it could happen to me. That was the most difficult part, to believe that given my circumstances, if my birth parents came down this aisle right now, I would not know either one if my daddy came up here or my mother came up here. Given the fact that I was born in an abandoned building on a floor, being labeled educable, mentally retarded, not having any college training, I used to feel all my life that people who had college degrees were more intelligent than me. I remember going to see the late Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, the author of the book, the power of positive thinking. And I used to look at him up on stage and I said, I could do that. I would love to talk to people. I love to talk to people. And I said, I could do that. But then when I started going back to my car, my mental conditioning activated itself. And it said, Les Brown, you can't do that. You don't have a college education. Les Brown, you can't do that. You don't have the training. You've never worked for a major corporation. You can't do that. What makes you think you can earn five, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars in an hour? You don't earn that now working for two or three months. What makes you think that you can speak for AT&T, Procter & Gamble, McDonald's Corporation, General Electric? These are clients I have now. You've never even worked for them. How many have ever thought about something you wanted to do and you talk yourself out of it? Raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about. That inner conversation is what's going to haunt you after staying here and saying, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. After saying that again and again, we are more than conquerors. That inner conversation will cause you when you leave here to go back leading a life of mediocrity, leading a life of unproductivity, leading a life of poverty. So I'm going to share with you how to break out of that. I want to share with you how to reach your goals. I think the Bible is the greatest motivational book ever been written. Now I want you to repeat after me, please. We've got to recondition our minds first. Let us say together, good things are supposed to happen to me. Yeah, write that down. I want you to say that to yourself every day. See, we live in a world where we believe that bad things are supposed to happen to us. I remember at a point in my life, Bishop, when things are going good for me, and I said, this is too good to be true. Something is bound to happen. Guess what? It did. Thou shalt decree a thing that shall be established unto you and shall accomplish that whereunto it has been sent. Watch your words. Watch what you say about yourself, about your affairs. Be conscious of that on a daily basis. Why? Because your words are powerful. In the beginning was the word. 
Life and death is in the tongue. Watch what you say. Never say I'm broke. Say I'm overcoming a cash flow problem. Claim what you want, not what you don't want. So affirm good things are supposed to happen to me and begin to believe that. So here's the first step to accumulating wealth. If you expect to do it, write this down. You must be willing to do the things today others won't do. In order to have the things tomorrow others won't have. That's why the Book of Life said the road to life is straight and narrow and few there be that find it because few there be that are willing to do the things today others won't do. In order to have the things tomorrow others won't have. What are the things that others won't do? Number one, make discipline a major force in your life. How many of you know if you'd have been more disciplined you'd be further along to reach your goals right now? Socrates said the undisciplined life is an insane life. The road to life is straight and narrow because few there be that are willing to discipline themselves. Here's something else that most people won't do. Make it okay to fail. A lot of people, 85% of people allow their fear of failure to outweigh their desire to succeed. Repeat after me please. Anything that's worth doing is worth doing badly. Yeah, see, anything is worth doing is worth doing right, as we have been taught, if you know how to do it. But if you don't know how to do it, it's worth doing badly until you get it right. I bet you, and I wasn't there, I bet you, that when Bishop T.D. Jakes first stood up to preach, when he gave his trial sermon, he did not have the command, he did not have the mastery, he did not have the confidence, he did not have the depth, he did not have the capacity to translate and milk scripture like he did last night when he first started out. Now write this down. You don't have to be great to get started, but you have to get started to be great. You want to master your talent, find out what it is that you love to do. I love to talk. Scripture is another key that says to us of what we need to do to begin to develop ourselves. Luke 12, 34, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So what do you love to do? And then explore ways in which you can earn a living doing that. Cooking, writing, painting, working with numbers, working with people. The other thing is, not only must you have knowledge, talent, some skill, but the other thing that's important, faith to act on whatever your dream is. See, if you don't believe in yourself, how many people you know that have a lot of talent, a lot of abilities, but they don't believe in themselves? Raise your hands. See, that faith is very important. So the faith to act on those dreams, those desires, to make greater impact, so what will allow you to do that? You got to spend time working on yourself. In order to do, write this down, in order to do something you've never done, you've got to be someone you've never been. In order to do something you've never done, you've got to be someone you've never been. That's why scripture says you must be born again. You've got to die as you are now. You've got to be willing to give up who you are now for what you can become. Certain things will no longer fit into your life. And so therefore, as you look at yourself, you've got to have this vision of yourself beyond your circumstances. You've got to see yourself every day. I can do this. I can make this happen. I'm blessed and highly favored. Good things are supposed to happen to me. You've got to see yourself every day working on your goal. You got to become a risk taker. Write that down. This God said, if you're not willing to risk, you can't grow. And if you can't grow, you can't become your best. And if you can't become your best, you can't be happy. And if you can't be happy, then what else is there? What are the reasons? Write down why you're here at this Manpower Conference. Write down five compelling reasons 
And why are you going to keep your commitment to change your life? Keep your commitment never to go back to the life that you once lived. Keep your commitment to creating wealth for yourself, to taking care of your children, to be more responsible, to manifest Christ in you, in your life, in your community. Keep your commitment to live a life of contribution, to keep your commitment to be a conqueror and to act like it and to have authority and dominion of everything in your life. What are those reasons I got on one of my tapes? If life knocked you down, try and land on your back because if you can look up, you can get up. Your reasons will help you to get back up again. They'll be your rod and staff to comfort you.